My name is Matt Widener. I'm a consumer justice and foreclosure defense attorney with a primary practice in the Tampa, St. Petersburg area of Florida. I want to talk to all of you this morning about what might be the best way to resolve a foreclosure case or the best way to unload yourself from a mortgage that's uh, underwater, a home that uh, is worth less than the total outstanding balance of the mortgages, and that is through a short sale. Now, this video is focused specifically at consumers, but there's also a real attention here that should be paid by realtors and other professionals who are working with consumers to try and resolve the foreclosure case or to help consumers through the difficult process of unloading themselves from assets in real estate that are uh, undervalued compared to the value of the mortgage. Now, I counsel all of my clients when they come into my office to meet with a local realtor who knows the market well. Again, I counsel everyone to do that. Even those families and those clients that say to me, look, I'm not interested in selling my home in foreclosure. I want to keep my home. I say to them, well, meet with a realtor first. Your intentions may change at some point in time. If nothing else, meet with a realtor and understand what your options are. Occasionally, and maybe sometimes frequently, that client will come back to me months down the road and say, you know, when we first met with you, we had no intentions at all of selling, but things changed. I got a job out of state or we got other opportunities elsewhere and uh, we decided to sell. Because we met with a realtor early on, we knew what our options were. We weren't uh, behind the gun waiting for something to happen. We were able to take advantage of those other opportunities that presented themselves. Now, here's the deal. Again, my job as a consumer justice and foreclosure defense attorney is to walk through each one of my clients the steps in foreclosure and to tailor a solution which is perfectly fitted to their needs. An important thing to understand is their needs may change over the months and years even that we're involved in foreclosure. So again, a meeting with realtors who know the local market is absolutely essential for anybody that's involved in foreclosure. Now, I will say to you this, any reputable, honest, and frankly diligent realtor will tell a consumer that's involved in foreclosure that you need to get a foreclosure defense attorney in addition to having a good realtor who knows the market. The reason for this is simple. A, an ethical and responsible realtor recognizes that a foreclosure case is a legal proceeding and that realtor doesn't want to get involved in providing their clients, their customers with legal advice that could come back to haunt them later and which could be false in many cases. Now, in the preceding couple of years, it's certainly true that um, foreclosure cases have drug on for, for months and months and months and even years. And so it had been easy enough for when a consumer gets hit with foreclosure for that realtor just to sit back, list the property if they aggressively wanted to sell at the front end, and move forward with that uh, foreclosure process. Scratch that little bit there. Let me start over here and, and say this. And start the edit now. Now listen. I know that in the last couple years, uh, it's been really easy for realtors to work with consumers who just got served with foreclosure, knowing that it would take months or even years for that foreclosure case to work itself out. Well, the fact of the matter is that things have changed pretty dramatically, or especially in the state of Florida. And that is, the time from filing a foreclosure case until when a final judgment can be entered has shortened dramatically. And you're going to really start to see that happen with all the cases that are getting filed new, and especially all those other cases that have been filed and pending for some time. The prudent and responsible realtor is going to recognize that fact and is going to say to their client, hey, you need to get a foreclosure defense attorney to analyze your case and make sure you're not in jeopardy of losing your home. Because what's happening is I'm getting clients in here every single day who had a foreclosure case filed months or, or even years ago. All of a sudden they're getting notices of trial, notices of summary judgment, notices of hearing. And if you try as an attorney to stop that train once it started down those tracks of sale and summary judgment, it's too late. Realtors, the message to you is this. You need to get your clients in with experienced foreclosure defense attorneys now in order to give them the proper advice they need for later down the road. This is another section here. I want to talk to consumers. I'll edit this. Okay, so under this uh, headline, I want to say short sales and the consequences of 1099 tax liability. Now, one of the things we're all familiar with in the space of short sales is the 1099C tax liability. 
What happens is whenever there is a forgiveness of debt, uh, the, the creditor issues what's called a 1099-C form. That 1099-C form says that we, the creditor, have forgiven, say, $100,000 in debt, and therefore the consumer owes taxes on this. Let's take this scenario. You have a $200,000 mortgage, and the short sale results in a net to the creditor or the bank of $100,000. Therefore, there's $100,000 worth of 1099-C tax liability. Now, the creditor is required to issue that 1099-C under all circumstances. Sometimes I'll get a question from uh, a client saying, hey, can't the, uh, as part of the short sale, the creditor just agree not to issue a 1099-C? And unfortunately, no, that's not the case. They are going to issue that 1099-C. Now, that form comes to the homeowner, and we all know that if the homeowner sold a home which was their primary residence, uh, they fill out a Form 982, that's IRS Form 982, show that it is the homestead property, and that 1099-C liability is wiped away, eliminated. There's a second category of cases, and that is when it is an investment property, uh, we know that for certain consumers uh, who are insolvent and meet other criteria related to that loan, um, that 1099 C liability can be dealt with by your accountant. Now, there's another really exciting area here that, that everyone needs to pay attention to, and that is that 1099C liability for those who have investment properties and who may not be insolvent. We're talking to folks that actually have assets and are concerned about doing short sales because they believe that no matter what, I'm going to get hit with that $10,000 or that, that, that tax liability. Again, in the scenario we're using, we got a $200,000 mortgage. The property sells for $100,000, and so there's a $100,000 tax liability, which is reported to the IRS, and then is charged as income to the homeowner, uh, even when this is an investment property, or especially when this is an investment property. Here's what's exciting, and here's the brand new uh, strategy here. If the consumer has taken the proper steps to contest that liability, the entire uh, liability that's related to that foreclosure case or related to that short sale, um, there is an argument, a pretty good argument, that in context of an adversarial or a com complex tax uh, contest strategy, you can defeat that entire tax liability. Now, for realtors, especially those realtors that are dealing with high value, high net worth clients, that are looking for a way to liquidate or get rid of these properties. This is a crucial point, something very important to understand. It is no longer the case that that 1099C tax liability is an absolute certainty. Let me be very clear about what happens here. Uh, early in the process, and this is long before you do the short sale, long before you enter into contracts, and certainly long before that client or customer gets their uh, the tax form or they're filing their tax forms. That client, that customer needs to be meeting with an experienced foreclosure defense attorney so that what I can do is set up the proper contest and set up this proper dispute at the front end so that when that 1099C tax liability form is issued to the consumer down the road, many months or even years after the short sale, um, we set up the proper evidentiary and factual basis that can be used to challenge the IRS when they try to tag that consumer, that high value consumer with that tax liability. Now, again, this is something that can't be done at the time the short sale contract is entered. It can't be done, certainly, at the time that the 1099C liability is issued. That's got to happen way, way, way in advance, preferably before the consumer even served with foreclosure and absolutely in the context of foreclosure proceedings. The foreclosure defense attorney and the experienced a short sale realtor that's working with consumers have a very important role to fill. We have complementary roles working together where the realtor does their job to sell the property, bring offers, and negotiate the short sale with the bank and with the purchaser, while myself, the foreclosure defense attorney, has a critical job to do as well, and that is to try and help move the consumer along through the process and oftentimes interface directly with the attorney that's working for the bank in this process. Now, oftentimes what happens is we can short circuit that entire frustrating short sale process where you know a consumer presents a contract, the banks negotiate back and forth on this, and we can't get a solid answer. So what my job as the foreclosure defense attorney to do is to get in the middle of that process with the bank's attorney, help them to understand that the short sale offer the realtor has on the table is the quickest route for the bank and for the consumer to get on with their lives. And again, when we work together and can address this 1099C tax liability, it's a phenomenal 
exceptional uh, partnership that provides exceptional benefits to the consumer. I'm Matt Widener, Consumer Justice and Foreclosure Defense Attorney in Tampa. I look forward to hearing more from you. Click onto my website here or give me a call. There's a chat function as well. I look forward to working with you. Thank you.